Kaur. We will do today is to talk about the more about combustion because we identified that combustion was one of the main reasons for most of the air pollutants that you see in the atmosphere. Okay. <coughs> And we will quickly see what you have done probably in your undergraduate when you were looking for the thermodynamics or the, the engines. Little bit of engines we all uh, study irrespective of the, what the branch you come from. Okay. So, we all understand there are two stroke engines, there are four stroke engines, two stroke engine also you can give little have a little feel, two stroke engines are a little dirtier. Okay because uh, they, we are not giving enough time for the combustion to complete and not getting the equi equivalence in the process. But anyway, let us have a quick look on to the four stroke engines that are spark ignition engines. In fact, in India, you will be, I do not know how much you know, there is a decision has been taken a policy decision that we will not produce any more two stroke engines. So, you like, I would like that you recall the two stroke engines and four stroke engines and within that, there are two kinds of engines is spark ignition engine and one is the compression. compression engine or that can be ignited on its own. Okay. And when we talk about the compression ignition in internal engines, these are the largely the trucks, the buses, the locomotives, the ships and all. Okay. But this also, uh, the some large engines okay, which are you know uh, compression engine, but they may also be too strong, but they are very, very few. Apart from that, we should understand at least recall that they are the kind of four or four cycles, okay, four strokes intake, compression, expansion and the exhaust. Okay. So, uh, do not read so much in here, because there is a little figure, which we all will recall that is much better and easier to understand. So, the first stroke is at intake. So, what you see on the top of this, this is the intake valve. Okay. The fuel is withdrawn okay. and this the, the piston is moving down okay. and this is the outlet or exhaust. You see that is a closed here, because there is a closing here. Okay. Once this is completely filled, Okay, which is air and fuel, then the compression starts. So, this time the piston is moving up and the both are closed. So, here the intake is also closed and the exhaust is also closed. The, the, the little line you see that one here. Okay. So, we get a compression stroke and then there is a power or expansion stroke. In that case also both the walls inlet as well as outlet or exhaust should be closed. So, these are the, this is closed and once you have the exhaust, inlet is closed, okay, the exhaust should open and things move out from there. As a result, you know the cycle goes on and then we continue to get the power stroke. And you can also see that this position where the theta is 0, theta is the angle okay, or, or called the crank angle between the piston rod and the crank rod and then this is called is theta. So, when it is in this position, this is called top dead center, we all know that. So, then theta is 0, theta is whatever the angle is that is theta. When it is at the bottom dead center, the theta is equal to 180. Okay. In two stroke engine, there will be only two strokes, but most of the time now we in India, we talking about mostly about the four stroke engines. In fact, all, all scooters even you see they all have been converted to the four stroke engines. Okay. Because uh, we will probably will see in the lecture that four stroke engines are cleaner than the two stroke engine. Okay. In two stroke you get the power very quickly, every second power you are getting, every, every second stroke you are getting the power, but in four stroke the, so the kind of pickup that you have on the scooters, you know those are two stroke Priya and all, they will be much more than the other scooters, but the technology is changing very rapidly in this case. We do not want to be expert on this one, but still we want to understand few things. This is the same thing that is what we described, okay, the top dead center, the bottom dead center and the crank angle and sometimes the emissions also depends on the position where the piston is. So, we will pass on this to you, so you do not have to worry about this. Okay. 
I want to tell you about a little bit about the fuels now, not so much into the details, but what are the fuels? We all know natural gas or CNG, okay, the compressed natural gas. You all are seeing that there is kind of a revolution that more and more people are using CNG now. And uh, earlier, most of the time, it was gasoline, but you see the CNG has become very popular. CNG is largely methane. It's a very clean fuel, simple and safe. It's not proper. Somebody says it is not safe. It is safe. The burners that you require to burn CNG are the very cheap burners because the cost of the burner sometimes is exorbitant. Earlier problem as to why the methane was not used was the largely problem with the storage and the refilling. Okay. It was not easy to store it in the, um, uh, at the petrol pumps and or in the engine and the refilling was a more problem. You know, like how do you refill the whole things. But these problems have been, you know, taken care of with the technology and now you can find more and more outlets. See, it takes a while. See, first of all, of course, you bring the pipeline and then the transport through the trucks a little difficult. And the moreover, then how do you transfer the CNG, that are the, uh, that are the problem. The other associated problem with the, um, with, the, with the natural gas, when it is, when it comes out, okay, when it comes out from its source, it is, I mean, a significant amount of H2S along with this, CO2 and the nitrogen, and H2S especially, it must be removed, okay, and it must, sometimes the H2S can be in percentage, okay. And just imagine in percentage, suppose and there is a plant which has uh, dealing with methane production and some leakage is there. So methane as such leakage of the methane in the atmosphere because there is already significant amount of the methane is there in the atmosphere. But if the H2S leaks along with this one, so there will be hue and cry. I mean people, this H2S, the order threshold is as low as 40 micrograms per meter cube. Little amount of methane and then the person are uncomfortable and they may find, oh well there is something terribly go gone wrong, when H2S can be in percentage. So earlier because of these problems uh, and then the storage and the transportation, these are little problems for people who were not using methane. In fact, in many of the oil fields, methane was simply burnt, okay, because they were interested in the liquid product, but things have changed with technology and then we are using lots and lots of CNG. Liquefied petroleum gas that we use in houses. No, it's largely the propane, okay, and it's clean fuel, simple, safe, cheap burners, easy to store and refilling. Because see here, this you cannot liquefy CNG, okay. Whereas this you can liquefy because it's a high molecular compound. You can liquefy this and store it, and then in the and right in the atmospheric temperature, it can be with the pressure that you are dealing with. So it can be liquefied as well as in the in the vapor phase also, okay, and then therefore you can. Use this and uh, it's easy to store, refilling, and many, many, you know, things are using uh, uh, the LPG. Not in houses, even in the automobiles, we have started using LPG. The both reasonably burns well, but methane is to be is directly available at the source. Wherever you are doing the, you know, like the exploration, methane is a product along with the the liquid crude that you get. And LPG is to be produced and processed at the plant. LPG will not come out because CNG is the gas form and so it will come automatically. But the, CNG, the LPG are produced in the refinery. And the problem with LPG is the little bit of uh, refilling is a problem. Okay? So you see this, this, this <coughs> the people you go at um, the CNG outlets, they are able to fill the CNG for you. But LPG is a key exchange the cylinders, okay? Because you can't do the refilling of uh, LPG so easily because this needs to be liquefied and stored and things like that. Well, this little bit reminds me. Suppose you are doing, you know, like at home we are there, and suppose the what happens is really this. Uh, you have the LPG cylinder. Well, we are drifting from our topic, but well, let's drift. That is the storage. This is really in the. LPG is really liquid inside and there is a vapor above this. So, it has a vapor pressure okay. and then what you are taking out is this, the vapor constantly comes out okay. and then you can, this vapor you are burning. So this is the problem that since it is a pressure that is maintained by this thing okay, and the pressure is always the same. Okay. So, problem with LPG in the household, 
you will never know will LPG cylinder is likely to be emptied unless you have put it onto the weighing scale. Okay. Suddenly, you know, we all know that the housewives are suddenly, oh, the gas is finished. Okay. Gas is finished because what the pressure is always there here because of this. Okay. And then pressure is not reduced, but suddenly as this goes by, the pressure is still maintained and then this disappears suddenly, I mean, you know, like. And then they might say, well, all right. And how did this, this very simple mechanism, it becomes, it takes the heat from the surrounding environment, okay, and then this becomes in the vapor phase, and that is what you need is the, is the latent heat basically, it takes from the surrounding. Suppose you run into the problem, try this, okay, you run into the problem, and suddenly suppose your mother or your wife or whosoever you are, you are working with, so the gas is finished, okay, and then you can or you might have even observed, you know, the shopkeepers, you know, like restaurant people, they will not keep it vertical. Of course, you should keep it vertical. They will put it upside down, okay. And in the winter especially, if you can put a little hot water onto this, not very advisable thing, but in the emergency, you put hot water onto this one, lay it down and put little hot water, because hot water you can get from electricity or whatever, or you have the hot water somehow, you put this in, you might still be able to reuse the, the remaining little liquid that you have, because that was not able to vaporize, because you know, like you need little heat in that area, and then you have laid it down, so that you know, the pressure is built up onto this side, and then this can vaporize, okay, because this is a liquefied gas, and you can still use it. So just, or even if, uh, some people wrap the clothes or something and put a little hot water and things like that. And then this, your LPG thing will work a little bit longer than what ordinary is. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Uh, but now people have the uh, ways that they can directly, even from the petrol pump, you can directly fill the propane into your, into your vehicle and things like that. Of course, the other uh, stationary, so stationary combustion, you know, people do use this one easily. Let's also talk about the solid fuels. Okay, this table I'll pass on, but just have a look onto this one. What the solid fuel? Because the major problem of air pollution largely is from the solid fuel. Okay, and then as you see, coal and oil and things like that. So this is a little analysis that is taken from a book. Okay. So you here you have the, you can burn the wood, peat, lignite, subbituminous and bituminous coal. And then you see it is the, <coughs> the as the coal is, the, the aging process happens, the carbon content goes up. Okay. All right. So you have the coal, wood, you have both carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, and some amount of nitrogen is there and some amount of the sulfur is there. And the ash of course is a very significant part. Okay, sometimes the ash, and these are the typical numbers. It can vary significantly depending on the what source we are talking about. There are goals which may have the sulfur content as high as 4 percent. Okay, there are coal from certain seams which may have the ash content, or especially the bituminous coal, ash content as high as 50 percent. Okay, but we still burn them because we need the energy. So here. And therefore, it has the coal will have many things other than the carbon and hydrogen which can burn. So you have the solid fuels will have you lots of emissions of the ash, okay, lots of emissions of the oxides and nitrogen, and also lots of emissions of the sulfur dioxide. Okay, so here what you need to see is the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and nitrogen sulfate. So when we want to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions. Okay. When you want to reduce the carbon dioxide emission, obviously these fuels are no good. Because see nowadays people are looking very comprehensively that what kind of fuel we should use to reduce the CO2 emissions because of the global warming and things like that. Okay. Some of the students you may know is, um, so now you can uh, trade. This also becomes a factor that we want to use this coal or, or this coal for that matter. Okay, because the emissions of the carbon dioxide will be much lower here. Okay. And this is a general formula for getting the heating value of the coal in terms of the dry values computed from the equation is this one. The higher, uh, the higher heating values that is the British thermal unit per pound, okay, you can always do the conversion, is times of the carbon and times the 
hydrogen minus oxygen okay because if the oxygen is more that is not going to burn plus this quantity with the sulfur but this becomes very very small in terms of the heat value okay but this also the sulfur can burn okay and it can give you some heat because this will be in a very very small quantity so just do some calculation are we here this we have some values here average wet basis as delivered this in us okay heating values are given here and then okay this so on the dry basis so i don't know if you want to try this try this and if you see that you'll get this number to indicate as to how much heat will be available okay so depending on your source you can use why i'm talking to about especially about the carbon content is uh, well, we might is quite related to carb, uh, some of you know but let me also we all know about we have to reduce the co2 emissions and all and this one of the technique is the cdm in this case the rich countries can invest in developing countries in terms of low CO2 emission technology and get okay you can get the carbon credit okay here idea is that well suppose i say well i have mostly anthracite coal in the country and i am going to burn most of the anthracite okay i am a developing countries i have no choice i have to still have to develop so suppose some country come forward well all right please don't burn this part of the coal will supply you with the better coal which has a low carbon and things like that so then the co2 emission will reduce but the reduction in the co2 emission that will occur that will go as a credit to the other country okay that's called as the cdm so there is a mechanism that you know like you and co2 is a global issue wherever you can control that's to the advantage okay so that's what i wanted to tell you that about the the fuel and things like that and let me also tell you that <coughs> Uh, the the SO2 issue which you see here, SO2 largely is in the organic form, and it can even burn much before the carbon will burn. Okay, so the moment you you fire, okay, you might not be able to burn some carbon, and then carbon may appear in your ash, but sulfur will never appear in your ash. because sulfur will quickly take off and burn okay that's very very important to understand because sometimes people will say well or some sulfur will be in the ash some sulfur will not burn but most of the uh, i should not say um, sulfur you should say sulfur is in so one of the first first thing to burn is so2 okay so you should have idea of the fuels what kind of what is peat what is lignite and what is wood and things like that and uh, see the wood has very low ash content and uh, things like that but then again the energy per ton of coal is more here it's little bit like as compared to what we burn in india it is a little bit on the higher side 
okay, because in India we will have the ash content will be very, very high here. Okay, so, these are not the picture from the, are we burning lignite somewhere in India? Yes. Neville Lignite Corporation, they have a huge power plant based on the lignite okay, and the other uses also they have for the lignite. Okay. Okay. Still talking about the engines and things like that. So, the emission rep, uh, depends on the air fuel ratio that we will examine in details, ignition time, compression ratio, combustion chamber geometry, engine speed and type of fuel. Okay, that is where the pollutant emission will depend from the internal combustion. Okay, some of them we will see and some of them we will not see because we it depends as to what extent we want to go. We can skip this slide because that is what I do not want to discuss so much. The pollutant in the combustion process is well all right. Nitrogen oxide, CO, hydrocarbons and soot and sulfur dioxide you can add because sulfur dioxide is also a very, very important uh, issue. Okay, let us see how, how, how and how it is happening. Let us talk about the nitrogen oxide because that is a very serious issue we have and then <coughs> let me also define phi. Okay. You remember that we defined the equivalence ratio last time? Okay. What was that? If you wrote that? Fuel air ratio actual divided by fuel air ratio is still Okay. So, that is what is again? Is that the same thing? The equivalence ratio? Okay. Now, quickly tell me if the equivalence ratio issue is less than 1. Am I on the leaner side or I am on the richer side? Leaner side. Okay. All right. If that is the case, let us have a look onto the sun. So, so, we have defined the phi. So, when the people look in the actual thing and try to give the reason behind this one, when is the peak NO, because NO is only formed, uh, happens is when the slightly lean of stoichiometry is when phi is close to 0.9. So, if it is on the leaner side, so you here you see the peak is somewhere, the NO peak is not here at stoichiometry or it is here, somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here is the formation. Okay, <coughs> because of the oxygen surplus is there. All right, we can keep on. Then in that case, this as we are we are talking about the excess oxygen, it does not necessarily that NO levels will continue to go high because as you increase the emissions. Okay, why? Because you need certain temperatures also. So what happens? It is very sensitive to the temperature. Okay, because you need a high activation energy. Okay. So, in the process when you are going towards too much on the leaner side, okay, because you are not supplying enough fuel, so temperature will drop. As the temperature will drop, then NO will not form. Although you may have lots of, uh, uh, lots of oxygen, because you are, as you are moving this side, you are having more and more of oxygen or the excess oxygen onto the side. But the, the two combinations are required. You should have the excess air, but also we talked, and the high temperature. So, when you want to manage the things, you can either manage by controlling the oxygen or by controlling the temperature. Okay. That we will see maybe today or maybe in the next class. Now, there is a terminology here very quickly you see prompt NO. Okay. That we will see in a moment, but stay with the term prompt NO. Prompt NO is that NO which is formed first. Okay and we will see that how that is formed. Before you can think of anything else the prompt NO happens and these methods with thermal NO is what is devised by Zeldovic. So, that is sometimes called Zeldovic NO. Prompt NO or the person identified this one was Fenimore. Okay. And then it could be due to oxygen atoms that in the flame front or due to carbon and uh, hydrocarbons and C2 molecules in the flame which is the front. So, what happens before even nitrogen and oxygen of the atmosphere can react? What you see here is that this thing can occur and you will see that even this hydrocarbon can react to some extent with the nitrogen and can produce nitrogen dioxide. Okay, before you, earlier what you were talking earlier we were talking about just N and O, okay. but here that is fine that is one root. Okay. So, what you see here the one root is of course, if you have the O, if you have this, okay, then this can be quickly be formed okay, you know, because the activation energy requirement is, 
it is actuation requirement this is the slow process okay actuation requirement is high and if you can with this it can react and it can form NO and this activation requirement is is reaction is much faster okay. So, Zeldovic you know occurs in the burnt gases okay because the fun excess everything has happened okay because this reaction of formation of N2O2 is slow burnt gases downstream of the flame front and not in the flame front itself okay. But this does not tell us the whole story because something else occurs right in the flame okay and what happens experiment shown that the sum of NO forms inside the flame okay that is called the prompt NO okay and then it may not depend on temperature it may not depend on to the nitrogen in the fuel okay. Achha, we will show you the plot of NO versus distance from the flame extrapolate back to the flame front location NO there is a this is defined as this picture I will show you in a moment experiment show that the prompt NO is more prevalent in hydrocarbon flames okay and for fuel rich flames okay. Even if the, fl uh, the fuel is rich even though the less oxygen the rich fuel thus uh, in this situation okay where uh, for the prompt NO okay this is not very important what is the temperature and things like that. But the reactions that may occur okay you see here when the people plotted this okay they and then they were like they found that there was a quick NO level and then stabilized that was more because of the thermal NO okay as we moved away from this one. So, initially you see the, the point I am trying to make here is that it for this formation okay it does not even need that you have the excess air or not okay that oxygen which you are supplying even for the combustion part of it very small amount part of it might just be taken by the nitrogen there and how it happens is that you have some hydrocarbons with this hydrocarbon can because there are the two routes possible routes okay still people are into discussing into this one how it happens that this hydrocarbon can react with nitrogen also okay which is there in the in the along with the uh, air okay and it can make the the atomic nitrogen okay and this atomic nitrogen can react with oxygen okay and this reaction was if you recall from the last slide this reaction was faster or slower mm, faster. Uh, much faster okay. So, you get here this is this is for so this reaction can happen and you can get some NO okay because the um, is much faster than the root from N2 plus O okay or some people also say that well some carbon may be available for the nitrogen to form C n followed by C n can react with the oxygen to give the C O and N O. Okay. So, this also can happen okay. so that you also can see although you may have lots of oxygen, but you may still produce C O in the process, but most likely process is this one that you can get the prompt NOx, but there is nothing much you can do about the prompt NOx that will be formed I mean that is that you cannot do much about that, uh, because this happens right in the in the flame people are ways looking at the ways and means to control the prompt NOx prompt NOx NO but that again this is not very significant amount I do not really know how much it is, but it could be as low as 2 percent 3 percent 4 percent that sort of thing ok. So, the new thing that you learnt is the the prompt NO and that is formed because of the reaction between the hydrocarbon before it can be taken up by the oxygen between the hydrocarbon and nitrogen ok that may produce atomic nitrogen and that can very quickly react with the oxygen before even this oxygen can take on to hydrocarbons ok. So, that is what is called the prompt NO ok. This is a little picture which you should uh, <coughs> let us spend some time on to this one. So, here this is what is the people did two experiments ok. How to say that how much can be thermal NOx and things like that. So, here you see this one first they did with the normal oxygen ok and they got they were burning petroleum derived fuel, the shell fuel, the coal derived. So, you look at the coals as little squares as you see there 1, 2, 3, 4 and things like that ok. So, they they did a regular operation ok and then he said uh, then <coughs> the nitrogen content in the fuel was there ok 
and then what was happening was the next time they, they, they did the same experiment with different fuels with different nitrogen content but this time what they did they supplied pure oxygen or pure oxygen along with the argon okay so obviously the nox formation will be much less right so this is or, or probably it should should say the same thing the lower curve shows the fuel nitrogen cons conversion as a determined by the substituting an argon oxygen mixture for the combustion air so obviously it will be only the the fuel nox that will be formed and so that with the difference they could find out that what is the quantity of the okay the total this will be largely with the thermal nox okay and that is what probably you can control or you can try to minimize this nox as opposed to the total uh, as opposed to the the nox that may come out from the fuel and then you can also see that well this thing is higher for the um, the coal somewhat higher the than the coal that you will see here so well this is here okay this is here and uh, corresponding the value should be somewhere here because they all have, have to have one to one correspondence and then you see the coal coal is in fact a very significant source of oxides of nitrogen okay okay so this gives you a little idea that as to how the people could figure it out that part of this one was the the nox and this and that okay this is another picture which is very uh, similar to what we have shown you earlier is that it is the uh, something now this is I'm not talking in terms of the oh I'm it's, it's a reverse same thing okay here we are plotting air to fuel ratio and that's like what we are talking about the equivalence ratio equivalence ratio will be something like reciprocal okay of the two ratios AF by and this and that. so again this peaks at this point okay okay at this point and uh, so if I have to plot stoichiometry where will be the stoichiometry the stoichiometry will be this side or this side how oh, this is the answer stoichiometry has to be on which side left side see the one on the top right that is stoichiometry because equivalence ratio is fuel to air ratio actual divided by fuel to air ratio stoichiometry okay, if it is one it means we are at stoichiometry okay so here you see here as on to this side as we are going in terms of the air to fuel ratio as we go put in more and more air okay the NOx formation is more and more okay then why does it decrease because although there is more nitrogen more oxygen but then your 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 mixture is becoming so lean that the temperatures that you are getting is not very high the temperatures are not high then in that case you know like it will tend to decrease because you need both you need the temperature as well as you need the excess oxygen okay. very funny but very very important graph okay it is the same thing and it's more of a mechanism as to the formation this is the same graph that we have to need to understand okay it's showing both NO and NOx so you see here largely it is NO okay a very small amount of NOx can be formed depending on the equivalence ratio that you have and then as you are increasing the equivalence ratio it will peak until 0.9 or something okay and then this will come down okay let's talk about the unburnt <coughs> uh, we are not talking about the control we will talk control in the next class but let's talk about the, the hydrocarbons okay okay in the engine emissions of the unburnt hydrocarbon comes from the raw unburnt fuel because some fuel can escape unburnt fuel that did not burn all the way to co2 and h2o okay some might just escape as such okay some might escape they are converted into something else but stayed as hydrocarbon but did not burn okay 
because you see you start with some hydrocarbon then they are they they are the intermediate oxidation of the uh, fuel that can take place so you started with let's say with methane for that matter uh, some may burn directly and some it may convert something like okay and then you what you might find that some might just go this as unburnt and you may find this could not burn in the process and this was never in there okay but this might also be seen at the exhaust okay so that's that is the difference between raw unburnt and fuel that did not burn all the way to co2 and water lubricating oil is a serious problem okay lubricating oil that we all use in engine is especially in the two stroke engine uh, which is using the fuel plus oil mixture okay so what happens is that uh, in the two stroke engine if you recall we what we do we put the lubricating oil every time along with the along with the fuel i don't know if you recall i mean the old scooters you go and they say okay 2 liters petrol 30% or 3% of that was the lubricating oil that you keep always add from outside okay and uh, in that case <coughs> you are adding the lubricating oil okay especially in the two stroke engine and sometimes the lubricating oil cause lots of emissions because in the process that can also get you know the um, uh, that can also get burnt and can give the fumes out i don't know is anyone from delhi here or have you seen the petrol pumps in delhi see what they do is that they have the earlier what people were doing they'll put the oil from outside okay that the lubricating oil that may be dirty or people had the tendency of using more oil they think oh there should be better lubrication okay but you don't need more oil more oil can be more problem okay so it can be raw unburnt fuel it can be fuel that did not burn all the way to co and h2 there could be lubricating oil because of the two stroke engine that emissions are more because that people put more and more lubricating oil okay and then other than the tail pipe which are more or less these things so in, i was giving the example in delhi so delhi they have banned that that you can't put the lubricating oil from outside so there's a dispensing machine along with the petrol machine petrol delivery pump you put this one and then it'll it'll put exactly dispense exact amount of the uh, lubricating fuel in there you can't buy it from outside and things like that other than the tail pipe there's the crankcase fumes okay um, that can come out fuel tank older cars they have they didn't have the any operative emission control system and filling stations in the region with two second hose to recover the gas tank vapors and the tires also we know also give the lot of organic vapors but that is not from the combustion sources maybe it might be a good idea that i don't want to leave you thinking we might talk about this thing a little bit later but i want to give you a little feel of this emissions here uh, the crankcase fumes okay Okay, this is a piston. Okay, this is inside the cylinder. At the piston, what do you find? Round thing. You always find piston rings are there. Okay. Okay. We have the piston is here. Okay. The piston rings. Okay, not a very good picture, but. what is the role of piston rings to keep it tight you know you have they are little flexible they can you know press okay and then they really expand themselves so that becomes little fixed okay what happens when you have the piston rings here okay as the engine gets old there is a wear and tear of everything of course there are two metal parts hitting each other all the time okay so what happens with this 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 things worn out and the piston rings also worn out okay so as a result when you have the expansion stroke or power stroke 
okay, as you are getting this one. So, there is the huge pressure here okay, and this because of this pressure which is very high here, this things because of the wear and tear, this hydrocarbon as even before it burns or partially burned, it can come out from the, 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 the space here and then come out in the crankcase. This can also come from the side also. Okay. And obviously, once this comes out, there is no way that you can burn it. Okay. So, this is called the crankcase emissions or more popularly known as blow-by emissions. See, combustion engineers or ice engine people, they will be expert on everything, but we need to know at the air pollution level is what are these emissions and why the crankcase emissions can be of huge significance. Okay. Maybe we will talk about the control of this thing maybe in the next class, but the, the most of the control that we they do is the blow by emissions are recaptured and recycled in the, in the car only. I mean, like. But at least now you know that this is what we are referring to you, the crankcase fuse, older engine without crankcase gas recycling. Because if you can recycle this, this, this emissions back in there, well, you are more or less handling the situation. But if you do not, then these emissions used to occur. So, therefore, you say, all right, the old guy, we, the, the, you know, like you must get the engine done well, the maintenance is very important and things like that. And um, sometimes, you know, the old engines can go so bad that then there is a government regulation sometimes, well, more than 15 year old engine should go out of business, you know, because these emissions can become very, very significant. And this will be all the emissions of the hydrocarbons. Uh, you can also see the fuel tank emission. Maybe we will talk about a little later about the fuel tank. But if you have the car, well, I don't know how good or bad the car looks like. Okay. Uh, let's see if this is the front. You have the light on this side, and then you'll have the fuel tank here. Okay. So, when they used to fill the this thing, you have the petrol is up to here. Okay. As you are filling, so the, the pressure here builds up and then there is the leakage is from here. Okay. So, this is called as the evaporation losses in the tank. Okay. But now of course, and then this can this can occur all the time. Okay. It is not only when you are filling it up, that time it is more because you have opened the wall. Uh, and that is when the emissions are more, but this occurs all the time. There will be some leakages, there is that, and even if you know, like even if there are no leakages, you can see where uh, in a in a petrol vehicle where this fuel is taken, fuel is pumped through the fuel pump, is taken to carburetor. Of course, the new technologies have changed, but the old thing you'll have the carburetor. And carburetor, what you do is it kind of vaporizes this one, and then you mix the oxygen with that one. That is why you think. So even if you know, like your your pipeline is open. Okay, as if fuel is going to the air carburetor and this engine is hot. Okay, the fuel continues to go there and then this is the liquid, but then the, it can ev evaporate from here and then there could be constant emissions from here. Okay, that can be just evaporation, okay, because you are unless it's the whole thing is you know cool off and things like that and then there can be emission. So, at least some people used to say like earlier scooter, the moment you are off the scooter, then you switch off this one. So, that at least this thing does not go anywhere. But now what these people are doing is that Phil probably will see in the next class is that they are able to recapture these vapors okay, and put it back in there. Okay. So, that you can completely recycle. We will probably will see one line diagram because you should know have an idea what the latest thing people are doing. And I do not know if you notice this thing that as you are driving and then you say okay your your car is showing you know the empty kind of thing okay and then we're all right you you stopped somewhere for half an hour one hour or this thing and this thing slightly going back and saying as if you have more petrol in your car okay this is all captured by the your operation system is very complicated the, the amount of research and development that has gone in the car okay i think there's no other machine where the the changes of the technology have 
so many efforts e even from the comfort to the combustion to the air conditioning and to the heating and then you can uh, adjustment of the seats they are like sometimes the seat there are four or five motors that you can adjust your back for this that I don't know everything you can do there. but so this all everything is is there so otherwise if you don't these things didn't have so they will ha also have very significant emissions from the this thing okay and filling stations of course they, they have to have sometimes the system that they can capture even at the filling stations and things like that. So you see the source of hydrocarbon that comes okay all right well we will we will do this one okay and you need really need to put some attention here because this is a very interesting and useful figure okay. So what I am trying to do is that well I am running the engine and trying to see what is happening in the exhaust. And I'm running the engine, let's say, for the different conditions of the air to fuel ratio, and trying to look at the three important things because carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon, and NOx, and their concentration can definitely look very, very different. And you see, be careful about the units. CO is in percentage, okay. Hydrocarbon is ppm; it can even be more, okay. And the NOx is again in ppm, okay. So let's see. Thanks to Vera, he has put this animation into this one. So, for example, our uh, stoichiometry is here, okay. And then I started, you know, put my engine on, and then you see the CO, okay. So, in this region, I'm not putting enough of the oxygen. I'll have lots of CO, which can be order of to five percent or so, okay. We have some measurement of CO. Sometimes we have found CO. An old two ambassador, old ambassador car of 70s or something, up to 8 percent, you know, okay. So that you see here, and as you supply more and more oxygen, almost up to stoichiometry, you see the emissions are going down. Fair enough, simple thing, but then the CO emissions will reduce depending on where you are, okay. Look at the hydrocarbon, okay. Now we are in the measurements of ppm again what you are doing is you are putting more and more hydrocarbon uh, um, uh, hydrocarbon reducing because you are able to burn more and more hydrocarbon but it does not really go very low okay like co because their emissions as we said that it can vaporize before it can burn something like blow by or something or these emissions can continue to ha happen and it may reduce it may reduce to at this point to minimum but it doesn't go so minimum also okay and then there's a little tendency here that it may go up why because now you are putting that even the fuel yeah there's not enough of the fuel not able to burn so chances of the unburned fuel also escaping become larger and larger here because you are not even you know you don't have enough things to burn and here in fact, even if you go so low, below 20 or something, you may not even able to fire because you have made your mixture very, very lean. Okay. If you have made it very, 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 very lean, then hydrocarbon might just escape because you are not even able to burn. And this side also, you, have, you may not be able to burn anything if you have just the fuel and not the oxygen. Okay. So these are two extremes. Okay. You engine cannot operate beyond this, engine cannot operate beyond this. So you see how the hydrocarbon emission will continue to be there. It doesn't go zero so easily. Okay, NOx. Okay, and obviously we have discussed a lot NOx about this thing. So as you go higher air to fuel ratio, something like this, it will peak here, and that equivalence ratio will be close to 0.9. Okay, and we also have explained the reasons as to why the NO or NOx for that matter will come down. Okay, so if you are operating your engine somewhere here, there are lots of NOx emissions. Okay, that we have, that I have explained you earlier, but that also is very clear. Let's see, we'll complete this. Don't worry. If I have to produce, I have to also the water is being produced, so I can also show how the water will change. So this water will change something like this. Okay, increase, increase. It'll go up to here, and then. <coughs> This water water will decrease. Why will it decrease? Water also you can think in terms of the percentage. Why the water would decrease? Because a simple dilution effect. You have more and more air. Okay, these are the all concentration units. 
okay so it will peak up to there and after that there is more air I am drawing in air to field ratio is becoming higher so the concentration will decrease probably the mass is the same uh, in fact mass is the same but the concentration will decrease because I am putting more and more air okay so you see here it will it will probably will decrease okay and oxygen it <laughs> there is no dilution for the oxygen but at some point oxygen should will it continue to rise the concentration of the oxygen or at some point it will stabilize to the atmospheric oxygen right okay it will be in percentage so maybe if I go a little bit more this side it will become stable right agreed so that I can so I can draw this one and everything okay before we uh, go to the next slide normally okay my patrol vehicles operate somewhere close to here okay okay it means I am really supplying less oxygen than because you want the good pickup and good this thing so we get this thing so if I ask you what are the issues with the petrol engines okay your answer will be carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons okay not so much of NOx okay you agree or it disagree sorry uh, did, uh, carbon monoxide sorry no if you come this side okay somewhere here so then see the carbon monoxide is again in percentage so it's not small 1.52 percent the units are in percentage all right so um, and let's see the issue in the relative sense okay so if I'm operating my engine somewhere here okay then I'm likely to get huge amount of hydrocarbon right huge amount of CO for that matter in the relative sense not so much of I know right okay agreed so look at the how the two engines with differenting will give you different emissions okay and as I operate on to the diesel side somewhere here okay I get lots of power I get lots of energy I can drive the huge trucks and I can drive huge uh, like locomotives and things like that but you see here maybe hydrocarbon not so much a problem okay CO is almost in the diesel truck you go and measure you will not get any CO okay but what will you get huge NOx NOx is a serious problem with the diesel engine and the other thing is also the smoke the smoke from the diesel engine that we will talk maybe in the next class but you can see how with little this knowledge okay the stichometry this thing and we can deal properly with the petrol petrol driven vehicles and the diesel driven vehicles we can set the standards for the petrol driven vehicle for the petrol driven vehicles you set the standard or oh, NOx should be less than this well where is the problem NOx should be oh, they'll say they're all happily but then you have to set the standard for CO and hydrocarbon for the petrol vehicles so in fact if you see in the regulation okay, or so called Euro 1 Euro 2 Bharat 1 Bharat 2 you all are aware of Bharat 1 Bharat 2 Bharat 3 you say okay Bharat 1 Bharat 2 Bharat 3 for the petrol driven vehicles so then they'll say for CO and hydrocarbon okay Bharat 2 3 for the diesel driven vehicle then you will see largely the, the about it will be about the uh, the smoke okay because diesel produce smoke that we have not discussed in the class but huge amount of NOx I don't think that we have a summary here what else is wrong CO2 how, how have we have we done about CO2 where is the CO2 going on this one yes okay yes. so that also you can so it should correspond with the CO CO uh, decreasing CO2 will increase obviously and after some time what will happen is that because of the, these are the all dilution effect more oxygen uh, more air so that will kind of thing so this is an important thing which we learned today something more oh, okay that was the question here diesel and then 70 other figure one more summary well we got it wrong here this is also not, not so much of hydrocarbon which a little comparatively NOx is high suit is high the suit is low here okay and hydrocarbon is low here okay that sometimes hydrocarbon can be more in the diesel engine because 
you're going up and you try to push more and more fuel which cannot even burn and that thing can come out. We'll stop here.